Ah, oh, now it works. I've covered myself up, would you believe? Um, I can't see myself on the screen because I'm doing an intro for the Roman Soldier Ghost Story. Now, I'm astounded how many people have actually watched uh, the ghost story about the airfield ghost on the Spilsby airfield. So I thought, well, maybe some of you ought to pay, have a look at this one because not many folks have read this one. But you see, uh, let's look at me, put the script on the screen. It's covering up my face. Let's have a look at this. Yeah, I'm pleased to say a lot of folks looking around. Now, you see, this one, we actually saw it. I mean, you don't often see ghosts, you know, you know, in the flesh, as it were, um, for, for a while. You know, there it is, looking at you. Um, but this one, we did, and both of us, Ruth and I. Now, Ruth is the most sceptical person you'll ever come across. I mean, ghosts? No. Anyway, this was um, some time ago now, several years ago, just outside York. Uh, the B&B is now a caravan park, I believe, but uh, the story you'll find interesting. But if you like the airfield ghost, this I mean, this one's different because it's nothing to do with animals or anything, but we actually saw it, you know, and uh, not many people actually can see them. I suppose that's maybe why they shut the B&B. <laughs> Maybe folks are going along to see the ghost. Anyway, I hope you enjoy this. Uh, let's see if it switches itself off. And Now then, do you believe in ghosts? Part 2. The York Experience. Now, my wife Ruth is perhaps the most level-headed person you could wish to meet. Ghosts to her were not even to be considered until we spent a night in a farmhouse B&B just outside York. York, as most folks will know, was a huge centre of the Roman occupation of England. Many of their original constructions in York still exist. York is saturated in Roman history. Consequently, there are several ghost stories from York. The most significant comes from the treasurer's house in York, where a workman once saw soldiers and horses walking through the cellar where he was working. He said they were walking on their knees, and in fact excavations at a later date found an original Roman road on the site at a much lower level. Our experience was at the farmhouse B&B called Crocky Hill Farm. It's situated only a couple of miles or so from the city, just off the road going south out of York in the direction of Selby. Ruth and I settled down for the night in a comfortable double bed in a large room with very uneven floors. Crocky Hill Farm was a house built originally centuries ago. Perhaps at one time it had a thatched roof. It certainly had lots of rooms and very large ones too. It was during the night that something made me wake up and look at the wall on Ruth's side of the bed. At first I thought I could not be looking at what I thought I was. I must admit I was quite terrified and straight away I shook Ruth awake and whispered that she should look over her shoulder to her side of the bed. He was just standing there by the bed a Roman soldier, in his uniform, in full colour. On the whole, a little greyish and shadowy, but clear enough. His face was not distinguishable, but the uniform was, and he held a lance, but no shield. The other most noticeable fact was that he seemed cut off at the knees. His knees were on the level of our floor, and nothing below, just the floorboards. Ruth actually saw him, because I asked her. As we both clung each other, clung to each other, he continued to stare and stand, there for perhaps just for a minute or so, and then just faded away. Next morning, the landlady looked at us and said, you seen him? We said yes, we had. And she went on to tell us that he is often there, but is harmless and the reason for his having no legs is that the farmhouse has been altered so many times since the first century that all the floor levels are different. From that day, or rather night, 
Ruth had to revise her answer if asked about ghosts because she had actually seen one. Finally, there is a ghost who used to live on the perimeter track of the old Spilsby airfield close to Northcote where we used to live. Spilsby airfield was a World War II bomber base and indeed active until the 1950s with the USAF. Several fatalities occurred at the airfield during the war and this problem used to affect our horses as they went past a particular spot on the road close to that old administration building. Now this, uh, this story, Jupiter and the Airfield Ghost, is, is number three in our series. So it's coming up shortly. There and then, <laughs> there we are then. That's the end of this short story brought to you by Cracker Books, written and read by Keith Sanders. Perhaps one day, when you actually come to see one, even you will believe in ghosts. You will certainly never forget the experience. There we are now. Thank you for listening to this story. Uh, if you uh, like it, perhaps you might give us a like on YouTube. Uh, it helps us with the YouTube people. And even, uh, even more than that, if you're to subscribe to our channel, then that helps even more. And when we produce everything new, YouTube will let you know. Additionally, if you're interested in looking at Cr Cracker Books, other publications, this next panel tells you how to find them. The first link is to our bookcase where you can find 10 different books, all free to download. There's historical books and picture story books about animals and dogs. Um, there's hours of entertainment there. The second link is to our website which tells you more about us and what we do and why we do it. So there we are. Thank you for being with us and until next time, goodbye.